Hi everyone, and welcome to the 2020 PyTorch Summer Hackathon. My name is Michaela, and I'm the contributor of the Neural Network Pruning Module in PyTorch. You're in for a summer full of hacking, so let me tell you more about this feature that I built and how it came to be to try to inspire you to build on top of it or contribute similar features to PyTorch. It all finally came together at last year's PyTorch Summer Hackathon. What better opportunity to finally contribute a feature that I've been needing and wanting in PyTorch than a hackathon full of other developers and PyTorch core contributors? The timing was just perfect, so I jumped on the opportunity and started writing. But why pruning and why then? In my day-to-day -day job, I'm a researcher at Facebook AI Research, and I focus on the scientific understanding of the dynamics of learning in neural networks, specifically with respect to overparameterized versus compressed models. And one way to compress models is by pruning connections or units. And there has been plenty of research recently that has focused on pruning and on the properties of these sparse networks. And in addition, on the production side, many teams have dealt with the practical issue of deploying very large networks and the desire to slim them down and make them more efficient. So as you can see, this is a topic that touches both research and production. But every team on the research and on the production fronts was using their own implementation of pruning. This was very bug prone and hard to port from one application to another, hard for team to reuse code, and I myself wanted to ask a lot of new research questions about the nature of prune models, and I always found my research efforts being frustrated by this one bottleneck, which was the absence of a single reusable pruning library. So I built it myself. I talked to collaborators, researchers, people on the production side, and I came up with a design proposal and a future prioritization plan. Then I sought the feedback from some of the PyTorch core developers on my idea and design proposal, and I opened up an issue, explaining why this was needed, pointing at research papers that clearly frame this as a hot topic in the community that would interest not only me, but many other PyTorch users and developers. And it was great. The PyTorch team was supportive throughout the whole process. They helped me refine my idea and ask questions that made me think critically about the design of this feature. And then I started building. It was a great series of days of hacking and hanging out with brilliant people. Overall, a memorable experience, uh, but it was crucial for me to get this module out the door as a prototype and move it into a state where it could start getting reviewed and tested. Now let me show you some of the details of PyTorch pruning in case this can give you some inspiration for your work. Base pruning method is an abstract base class that provides a skeleton for all pruning techniques and it implements a variety of shared functionalities. It also enables the creation of new pruning techniques by requiring the overriding of methods such as compute mask, for example, which handles the mask creation logic that powers different pruning techniques. All pruning methods currently available in torch.nn.utils.prune are listed on the right and are derived classes that inherit from base pruning methods. These include a pruning container to handle the successive application of multiple pruning calls, an identity pruning technique that doesn't truly alter or prune the tensor, and then a variety of random and magnitude-based pruning techniques, either structured or unstructured, so connection-based or channel-based, and finally, a custom pruning class that enables the application of any user-provided mask, perhaps obtained through a neuron importance estimation technique of your liking. PyTorch pruning is therefore very flexible and easy to extend to new pruning techniques that aren't currently included, and you're welcome to contribute to the module. But how does PyTorch pruning really work? Let's look at it, starting from its core functionality, the mask computation. In fact, pruning is implemented by applying a binary mask onto the tensor that one wants to prune. In other words, we don't physically remove or drop connections or neurons. We simply generate and store a mask that identifies which connections are present and which have been pruned. The way this mask is computed is unique to each pruning technique. For example, L1 on structure pruning zeroes out the connections with the smallest synaptic weight in absolute value. Compute mask then takes as input the weight tensor and returns a binary mask of the same shape that identifies the surviving entries. Once the mask is computed, the real design decision involves how to store it and use it for correct forward and backward propagation. The choice I made is essentially a reparameterization of the pruned tensor in terms of its unpruned version and a mask. 
to keep track of the pruning history, the pruning method is attached to the module as a forward pre-hook, which in PyTorch jargon represents a function that gets called right before each pruning call. This way, the user doesn't have to explicitly remember to handle the mask in any specific way. And this also means that the user doesn't have to explicitly modify and patch the former method of a network to be able to benefit from pruning. PyTorch pruning is very easy to use and very easy to extend. Make sure to check out the pruning tutorial on the PyTorch website for more information. So in conclusion, it was important to me to create a lightweight centralized way to handle pruning across a variety of research efforts in a way that wasn't tied to the individual contribution and hard to port, reproduce, and reuse for different research questions within the area. So what I envisioned with this contribution to PyTorch was the creation of a common language to express pruning concepts without getting stuck into constantly rethinking how to correctly implement infrastructure details around pruning ideas. In building this, I wanted to keep in mind both the practitioners and the researchers. First, I wanted to provide practitioners with an easy way to use and scan over reasonable mainstream ways of pruning their networks without necessarily becoming research experts in the pruning literature. And second, I wanted to empower researchers to propose new pruning techniques and express them through a common language. So if pruning is just another step of your machine learning pipeline, now you can more easily scan through your choice of pruning method as easily as you scan through, say, your choice of optimizer or learning rate. And if instead pruning is at the center of your research, this will hopefully provide an API and language to express your ideas. With the constant support and feedback of the core PyTorch team, pruning eventually made it into the official PyTorch release. And this is how it felt. It is now available for you to use, play around, build on top of, and expand. So perhaps that can be the topic of your hackathon.